So the first thing we do is we kind of visualize what's happening in the picture. And so we got some conveyor belt that's pouring the sugar into a big old pile. The pile is conical, so it's going to end up giving us a cone shape here. Now, we want to label that. Now, you don't necessarily need all the niceties in the label, though. Really what we care about is triangle. We don't really have to make the conveyor belt or anything, right? What we're interested in is the triangle and all of its pieces that form the cone. So this might be one way that you might draw that out as a way to help visualize what's going on. Notice, if you didn't already, that the radius is not 30. The width of the entire pile is 30, which means the radius is 15. So make sure that's what you're using as you go forward from there. And so, of course, it's dealing with volume of a cone, so we go to our volume formula for a cone and all that kind of stuff. But remember that if I just started here and started just taking the derivative with respect to time, I would end up with something I didn't want. Because I'd end up with an equation that had both dr over dt in it and dh over dt. Oh, no. And so we don't want both of those in our answers because we don't know either of those. Which one are we trying to actually find here? dr over dt. How quickly is the height of the pile changing? That means we're looking for dh over dt. So if my final equation is going to have dh over dt in it, that means that my volume equation needs to be written entirely in terms of h. In other words, i got to get rid of the r. So like in this case, in order to do that, I know that r over h equals 15 over 10. So I'm going to go ahead and solve that for, oh, for no. R. Oh my God. So we want to make this into R equals, so that means multiplying both sides by H, so that would be 15H over 10, Reduces although I'd simplify it, let's go ahead and call it 3 halves H, yeah. or 3H over 2, either way is fine, they both mean the same thing. And, then you just plug it. So like, and now that we know that, you can plug it back into the original equation. And so I plug that value of r in for r, so that then the entire equation is just going to be in terms of h. That way I'm not going to end up with dr over dt in my final answer. Now, to go from here, yes, you could take the derivative at this point, but clean it up first. Make your life a lot easier by actually cleaning that up, by squaring it and combining the like terms and all that kind of stuff. Oh my God, you're so bad. All right, so now that we have the actual volume formula that we're going to use, Let's go ahead and find our derivative. Oh, okay. So now find the derivative with respect to time. All right, and once we've taken the derivative with respect to time, plug in the values that you know. And so now we gotta plug in dv over dt. What is the value of dv over dt? Is it four or is it negative four? We're increasing the volume by that amount, so yes, it is positive. H. Well, that's the actual height we had up here. Now, notice I had to wait until the end to plug that in. If I plugged it in earlier, I would have just had V equals some number, and when I found the derivative, I would have thought that it equaled zero, which it doesn't. So remember, you can't plug in a value that's changing until after you find the derivative. All right, now that we've plugged that in, now it's just a matter of solving that through, doing the algebra, and so on. And so the whole thing ends up working out to be 16 over 900 pi. And what are our units here? Can you reduce that, please? And so the last thing that you might do in doing this one is actually go ahead and reduce it. Uh, you notice you can divide top and bottom of our fraction here by 4 here. So we end up with 4 over 225 pi feet per hour. per hour. So we're now going to take a look at this variation of the same problem. Now, in this one, we have all the same dimensions, all the same setup, but we're changing one thing. We're changing the radius. So we want to know what, in this case, dr over dt is instead of dh over dt. Now, in the last one, I figured out what dh over dt was. But unfortunately, that doesn't tell me what dr over dt is. I have to go back and do a little bit of the work from scratch here. 
And so in this case, when I go to solve this proportion of r over h equals 15 over 10, this time I want to know what h equals. So I'm actually going to solve this for h. And so we cross multiply, solve from there. And so when we solve, we get 2 thirds r equals h. Now that's what I'm now going to go plug into my volume formula. So volume equals 1 third pi r squared, because we're leaving the r in this time, times h, so times the 2 thirds r. And yes, let's go ahead and simplify that before we go too much further. And so when we plug it in in this case, this is then our simplified equation that we're going to look at. It is going to be v equals 2 pi over 9 r cubed. Notice I didn't have to square the 2 thirds this time because it's not the r, it's the h. <coughs> Now go ahead and find your derivative with respect to time. And so when we find that derivative with respect to time, this is what we're looking at. And then we can go ahead and again plug in the information that we know. And then from here, solve for dr over dt. If all went well, you should get an answer of 2 over 75 pi feet per hour. And yes, we've been given the answers as exact forms. If you didn't want to do exact, you could actually calculate that as a decimal. That's also okay. I just am sticking with the exact forms. Now, the one thing to note about this problem and the last one, remember that I basically had to start by figuring out what was I looking for. In this problem, I was looking for how fast is the radius changing, so I knew that my answer had to be <coughs> dr over dt which means that my equation had to have the r but not the h. When I'm looking for the h, I get rid of the r. So just make sure that you're paying attention to which one it is you're doing in that particular case. All right, now as you take a look at this of course, you want to start by thinking about what's it saying and then what's our picture going to look like. So we have one car that's traveling north at 50 miles an hour, and another one is driving west. Let's hear that. The one going north though, notice it left the intersection. So this is going to be my intersection here. So he's traveling north away from the intersection. But the other one is driving west, so he's driving this way. But he's still going toward the intersection. And so I know that that car has got to be over here. So one car is going away from the intersection. The other one is going toward it. And what we're interested in is knowing how fast the distance between the cars changing. So in other words, the hypotenuse length because, of course, this does create a right triangle situation. Well, the good news is that, it's, that since it's a right triangle and we want to know what's going on with the hypotenuse, we know what equation to use, right? You're going to use the same equation as we used back with the latter problem. Use the Pythagorean theorem. Now, I'm arbitrarily going to assign the lengths as A and B. I was thinking I might use N for north and like W for west or something, but the car that's to the west, or that's driving west, is uh, to the east, and so I thought I might get confused if I did that. So I just called it A and B. And then, of course, we take the derivative of our Pythagorean theorem, and you should end up with this as your derivative. Now, a reminder, and it's actually something I usually do, but I'm not going to do it in the example up here. But I'll often at this point notice that since there's a 2 in every term, I'll go ahead and divide every term on both sides by 2. And you can simplify things down a little bit. So if you choose to do that, that's fine. That's good. All right, once we are here, start plugging in the information that you know. All right, now when we go and start plugging stuff in, uh, you'll notice here I went ahead and labeled on my picture as well what is what. Okay, so we plug stuff in, but there's one little thing I want to tweak here. On the left-hand side, you can see what I wrote in. One of those numbers needs a little bit of a change. Which one? Negative. Notice side B of my triangle, it's actually shrinking. Since side B is shrinking because he's headed towards the intersection, I'm going to need to make B... I'm sorry, dB over dt, uh, a negative 40. Subtract, subtract. And then, 
I actually got one other thing I'm going to have to figure out too. And that is, what is C? Because I actually have to plug the length of side C in here. Well, you'll notice the two sides are already 0.3 and 0.4. Uh, you could go ahead and use Pythagorean theorem to solve for C there, or you can recognize that this is a 3, 4, 5 triangle, and therefore side C is going to have to be 0 0.5 miles. 3, 4, 5 triangle? And so... And so this is your total setup solved from here, which, by the way, you'll notice, in this case, it's actually going to be fairly straightforward because 2 times 0.5, that's just 1. So I'm not even going to have to divide anything out of that right side. All I have to do is figure out what does that equal. And so when we do that calculation, we end up with a negative 2, and that's miles because C is measured in miles, over time, which is measured in hours. I know it's hours because it's MPH, miles per hour, up there, and so it's going to be the same thing. Yes, you can write it actually as MPH as well. So negative 2 miles per hour. Now, think about what this means. This means one car is driving away from the intersection, the other one's driving toward it the actual distance between them is closing at this particular moment. Now, of course, at a different time, if those distances were different, that might actually change. It might actually be that they're getting further away. And that will happen if you continue looking at this. As more time progresses, they'll be getting further away. But for the moment, at least, because we're approaching the intersection still, we still are actually getting closer. So, when I want to make the drawing of this, I have one car that's traveling south at 60 miles per hour. Now, both of these, though, left from the same point. So my other one, when it's traveling west, is traveling from that same location. And, of course, what we're being asked for is the distance between the cars. How is that changing? So, in other words, it's asking for the hypotenuse. Now, it seems like maybe we aren't given a ton of information here because we're just told that the car that's traveling south is traveling at 60 and that the car traveling west is traveling at 25. But we are told that they're traveling for a total of two hours. Well, how far has the southbound car traveled in two hours? Well, if it's 60 miles per hour for two hours, that would be 120 miles. Oh, 120 is 65. And the other one traveling west at 25 miles an hour for two hours, that would mean that it would be 50 miles. Oh, 50, not uh, 65. All right, and now that we know that, now you can go ahead and find your C value as well. So C here, use Pythagorean theorem, 50 squared plus 120 squared, take the square root of it. It works out to be a nice pretty number, 130 miles. All right, proceed from there. So I'm going to go ahead and jump in from the stuff I already know. I know that if I take the derivative, and I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides by 2 in this case as well, I'd end up with A times DA over DT plus b times db over dt equals c times dc over dt. And of course, dc over dt is what I'm going to be looking for. That's my goal to solve for. All right, we start plugging in. Now, before I plug in, make sure that you actually write down which one you're treating as a, b, and c. It doesn't really matter as long as c is your hypotenuse, but you don't want to associate the wrong numbers. Like, I don't want to associate the 25 with the 120. It's going to throw off all of our calculations. All right, so when I go ahead and plug that in, 25 times 50 plus 120 times 60 equals 130 dc over dt. Solve from there. 
All right, so we do that work. We get 65 when we actually work that through. You know, we do the addition, multiplication over here. We divide it by 130. We get 65. What's C measured in? Miles. Miles. T is measured in hours. So it is miles per hour. Having seen that, the 65, would I have been able to get that number if I actually just wanted to do the 25 and the 60? In Pythagorean theorem, could I actually use the rates that way? No. Yes. Well, would 25 squared plus 60 squared equal 65 squared? I don't know. In this case, the answer is yes. It actually does work. Then why do we do it? However, does that mean that I can just get to know like the same thing for like a cone problem? No. It happens to work with this one, but. Don't expect that it's going to work with every equation. It works with this one just because of the type of equation it is.